Hey guys, so when Sophie and I first started thinking about doing long offshore ocean passages, we knew we needed some type of offshore communication tool to help us along. I already had a small tracker from InReach, which I used in my backcountry backpacking days, but we knew we wanted something a little bit more. Something that could do maybe voice communication, data communication, and help us along in case we had an emergency or had someone to talk to. We looked at a lot of options, but eventually settled on Iridium Go, which was kind of the best of both worlds. In fact, it helped us through Sophie's burn saga and gave us a lot of peace of mind along the way. In this video, we're gonna talk about many different communication solutions available for you while you're away from shore and out playing with dolphins. We're gonna talk about SSB, different satellite trackers, satellite phones, data communication, and even Starlink. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. SSB, or single side band, otherwise known as HF, or high frequency radio, is not satellite communication. I know, I know, but I think it's worth a brief mention here. You see, most communication equipment operates off the principle of line of sight. In other words, if we have a tower here that's transmitting, it needs to be able to see another tower here. If we're on a globe, sometimes, because of the curvature of the Earth, we can't see the other tower. Yeah, newsflash, the Earth is round. Most communication equipment operate off of the principle of line of sight. So smoke signals, VHF, 4G, they all operate off this. But high frequency radio or single sideband operates off a different principle. In fact, the signal can go up and bounce off the ionosphere and go all the way around the planet. This creates good value for us offshore sailors as we can communicate a long distance. Even today, ships, aircraft, and even spacecraft use high frequency radio to communicate with the outside world. So why consider SSB? Well, other than the small upfront cost of equipment and maybe some small service fees from land-based support, there's very little you need. Just plug in the equipment and bam, you can talk to anybody else with an SSB. In fact, they even sell a printer with SSB and you can do small data transmissions with it. Pretty cool, huh? Installing an SSB is not quite as straightforward as VHF. You need a control head or essentially like the face that you'd see on a normal VHF. You need a tuner, you need an external antenna, maybe a speaker, possibly a printer if you want that option, and then a bunch of insulators and isolators to make all of it work. The equipment is also a bit large and heavy, but hey, you can be sitting in Bonaire and talking to China. Pretty cool. The price is also something you'll need to consider. The price for the control head and the tuner is anywhere between two and 3,000 euro. Then you need to add on an antenna, which can be between $200 and $1,500. You also need to add in cabling, which can be a few hundred bucks, some insulators and isolators, and then if you want that printer, that might be a few more thousand. So all in all, it may be five to 8,000 euro setup. There are not a lot of SSBs on the market anymore, ICOM being the one I'm most familiar with, but there may be a few other options. You can find these at most online channel sites, but be aware that there are different certification requirements to use an SSB than a VHF, so you'll need to check that with your home country. So, Sophie and I do not have an SSB on board, but I have considered it. It's a little bit of an archaic communication function, but I think it would be cool to join different high frequency nets along the way as we're offshore cruising and would give me something to do, but we just haven't decided to put that amount of money into an SSB. So, we have considered it maybe in the future or Polar Seal number two. Now on to the real thing, satellite communications. Satellite communication providers are essentially just fancy mobile telecom providers. What we do is just replace the many ground-based antennas with a few space-based antennas. What happens is your satellite device or your phone sends a signal up to that satellite, that satellite then bounces the signal back to a ground station and then connects with the telecom or data infrastructure, and then sends a signal all the way back. It sounds easy in principle, but those satellites are whizzing through space at 17,000 miles per hour so it is a bit complex and takes a bit of finesse to make it all work. So what options do we have on our yacht to utilize the satellite communication system? The first is a thing called trackers. Trackers became all the rage about 10 years ago when backpackers were out in the backcountry trekking around and wanting to show all their friends on social media where they were. What they do is track your movements, provide that to a website, and the user can even, in some cases, send short updates and messages about where they are and what they're doing. 
Many trackers have an SOS function so that there is an emergency you can click the button and search and rescue will be deployed to your location to try to help and find you. So with that you can see why this might be appealing for many offshore sailors. When it comes to trackers there are a few options on the market. The first is the Garmin inReach and in fact I even have one although this is the older model this is the DeLorme version but Garmin bought DeLorme. The monthly fee ranges from about $10 a month to $60 a month and provides you with tracking, SMS, basic weather, and even some map functions. Fun story time. When Sophie and I met, we actually started our relationship on this actual device. I was doing polar survival training in the northern outback of Greenland, and I was courting her through 160 character SMSs. It was very short messages, and I must have said something right because she decided to stay with me for a long time. So see, it does work. Another device is Spot. Spot is a device very similar to the InReach and was originally developed for tracking and SOS functionality for people in the backcountry. Spot has now developed into a wide range of two-way communication products and at one time they were even making a phone. Spot uses the Globestar satellite network and is one example of a communication provider making a product that operates on someone else's network. Pricing is generally the same for the unit, around $400, and the pricing per month is around $10 to $30. I have no practical experience with Spot, but I do know that their coverage area is a little bit more limited than the InReach, so it doesn't cover all of the world's oceans, but for the majority of us offshore sailors, it should work. Another tracking device is one called SatPhi 2 which is a device similar to the InReach and Spot, costs around $500, but costs anywhere between $50 and $2,500 a month. That's because the device's main objective is to send data, so the data speeds are some of the highest in any tracking device, it's at 72 kilobits a second. Is that really the fastest? It's pretty, it's the fastest, which is pretty sad, but that's what we've got to work with. I have no practical experience with this device, but there are some reviews online which you may find interesting and could be another option for you. The last tracking device we'll talk about is one called YB Connect, and this device is more tailored for offshore sailors. It either has a handheld unit or one that is permanently fixed to the boat. Again, the units cost between four and $500 and the monthly fees are 10 to $30. It does tracking, SMS, and you can even send short emails over the YB Connect. I don't have any practical experience with the device, but Sophie does, because you've used it with Andy Shell on 59 North, right, honey? I'm gonna insert a little story about that because you never answered my SMS. Apparently I never answered Sophie's SMS. So if she would have been courting me over SMS, it may have not worked. Installation with trackers is pretty straightforward. Most of them are handheld devices so all you need to do is buy the device purchase the subscription charge it up and let it connect so from that standpoint it's really the easiest way to go sophie and i did investigate using this tracker for our ocean passages but we quickly realized that it just didn't meet our needs we couldn't make phone calls and if there was an emergency it would be very difficult to communicate with people only using 160 characters at a time especially if they don't answer so i think it's a very good backup tool or if you're on a really tight budget for, for us it just didn't work Okay, now on to set phones. Most communication providers got their start not with data communications, but with voice communications. Even today, almost all the satellite providers provide some type of voice communication. With data costs being so expensive, having the ability just to pick up the phone, talk to somebody about what you need or what your emergency is, is a pretty attractive option for most offshore sailors. Most satellite phones work just like your normal cell phone. You turn it on, it connects to the network, and bam, you can get a hold of grandma and get her awesome cookie recipe. One thing about satellite phones is either you have a signal or you don't. There's no static or bad connections. Another thing about satellite phones is latency. It takes a little bit more time for the signal to go all the way up to the satellites, all the way back down and connect to the network. So you may end up getting into a situation where you're stepping or talking over the other person just because there's a lot longer delay. We ran into this problem trying to talk to my mom in the Atlantic over the Christmas. That said, the pros definitely outweigh the cons for satellite phone service. So there's nothing better than talking to your family over Christmas while you're in the middle of the ocean. Or your nurse sister when you have a little or health when, problem. Or when you have a health problem and you spill wine and coffee on your leg. Most satellite phone providers do provide a service where you can get small data packets over your phone with just a little extra equipment, like a router. 
this will come at a cost. So how do we pick our satellite phone? Today there are roughly 3,500 satellites whipping around in space. This can be from private companies, militaries, states, or regional communication providers. We will not talk about them here, but we'll focus on two of the most common networks found in the cruising community. Immersat and Iridium are the two biggest commercial satellite communication providers. They provide services for their own hardware as long for third parties who are making hardware. The only two differences between these providers is the coverage areas which they provide service around the world. Iridium is one of the only truly global communication systems. That's because their satellites are in lower Earth orbit and are zipping around orbital planes that go over the poles. So if we go above 70 north or south, we can still get the signal. Immerset, on the other hand, has their satellites up in geostationary orbit, so we're limited to that 70 north and south mark, which for the majority of us is still okay. Another service is VSAT, which offers fleet broadband, TV, and other services to users around the world. This is similar to KVH, which you may see on some super yachts or very large ships, these big domes that say KVH, and they can get TV, internet, all kinds of services. Both Immersat and Iridium offer a wide variety of phones to choose from. These can range in cost anywhere from $500 up to $2,000 based on the equipment that you buy. Monthly cost depends on, well, how much you want to talk. Iridium has plans that start with 10 minutes a month and cost $55 and go all the way up to 500 minutes a month up to $500. You choose your phone and your plan based on the dealer network which you find online and I have to say this is one of my biggest gripes with the satellite communication industry. There is no Immersat store like a Verizon store that you can just walk into, buy a phone and get a plan. These companies use a very archaic, outdated system of dealers that are spread all over the world, have really crappy websites and have a bunch of information that is confusing, potentially misleading and leaves us with more questions than when we start. As I mentioned before, these providers can also provide data over the phone network. This is a separate cost and the prices are extreme. Immerset has a $90 plan for 100 megabits of data, and Iridium on their Centris network has a 10 gigabit data for, how much do you think? 100, 200, no, $2,500, and it's apparently one of their best sellers. Do you think a lot of cruisers have that? I don't have that. Let's have, let's have a vote in the comment section. People, do you have that? Regardless of what phone or data system you go for, it's really important the device has a clear view of the sky. Because as I mentioned before, the system operates on the principle of line of sight. So even being down on the galley can have a big impact on the reception of your phone. Other than that, there's no big installation considerations to take into account unless you want to have a permanently installed charging base station. The next device we'll talk about is the Iridium Go, which is really just a cross between a tracker, a phone, and a data hub. This little device acts as a hotspot which connects to the satellites. You can connect your phone to it, your computer to it, whatever device you want to run the internet through. Through a variety of different apps, you can access email, weather data, and you can even make phone calls to the outside world. We actually sent a few photos while crossing the Atlantic, and while I don't recommend doing that, it did work, although it took multiple hours to send. <laughs> the downside to the Iridium Go is that its data speeds are 1990 slow. I think it's even slow by 1990s standards. The Iridium Go operates at 2.3 kilobits a second, which is essentially snail's pace. But if you're in the right mindset before you start off, it does get the job done. There are many different dealers for the Iridium Go and a quick internet search will yield you a lot of results. But as I mentioned before, the dealer networks and their websites aren't very good and the information can be a bit confusing. So we purchased ours through Predict Wind, which we already had our weather information from. Their website was very clear and had concise information. The unit costs about $700 just for this, but for a few hundred dollars more, you can get the Marine Kit, which includes this big external antenna, some mounts and the cabling needed to support it. We used the Iridium Go originally just having it sit on the table in the cockpit and we'd get about four bars of signal strength. When we installed the Marine Kit, it was always getting five bars. The data speed was significantly faster. So I would recommend if you're using this on the boat to get the Marine Kit, it's a few hundred more. And I do think it's, it's worth it. Plus we have it permanently mounted in the boat. 
As a lot of you know, we're giving one of these Iridium Goes in the Marine Kit away. We're going to announce the winner at the end of this video, so stay tuned. Stay tuned! There are different plans for the Iridium Go, and depending on the dealer, different pricing. Plans start at $50 and go all the way up to $140, and my personal recommendation if you're going to use this for offshore sailing is to get the unlimited plan, because a large weather download can eat up a lot of data, as it can take a lot of time to download. So we get unlimited data with our $140 a month plan and 90 minutes of talk, which we don't ever use in full, but it is nice to have in case you have an emergency or you want to call home and just have a chat. Installation for the Go is really simple. In fact, if you don't have the Marine Kit, all you need to do is charge it up, get a subscription, lift the antenna, throw it on the table, and bam, you'll have internet. If you do get the Marine Kit, you'll need to install the antenna and run a few wires, which is always a fun job on a boat, but it is worth it to have a permanent installation and better signal strength. If you're looking for a good all-in-one solution, which won't break the bank too much, I really think the Iridium is the way to go. It won't win any speed awards, that's for sure, but if you are in the right mindset before you start, it is a great device, and I think for Sophie and I, we would not go offshore without one. So last, the future. I know in the comment section below, we're going to get a lot of comments about Starlink and all the great things they're doing. You see, Starlink is trying to deploy, I think, like 40,000 satellites into space. Remember when I said there was only 3,000 satellites in space today? Yep. They're trying to deploy this huge network to provide low, fast, reliable internet to everybody on the planet. It, in principle, sounds really great, and in fact, I just got an email to purchase hardware for the system, which I'm really excited about. The reality of it is, boats move and so do the satellites in space. So we can't just use the normal equipment that Starlink is coming out with. It just simply won't work. We need to have more robust equipment that can move and connect to the different satellites, and this is not what's coming right now. However, Elon is working with the Navy, so I do expect in the next few years that there will be some options for mariners like us. Probably not in 2021, which is a bit disappointing because that's what we were hoping for, so we could go to the Pacific. The other thing with Starlink is that they're geolocking their service. So if you buy a system and have it in Des Moines, Iowa, where I'm from, I can't just take that unit and plop it on my boat because it's geolocked. So every time we move, we need to call the company and have them change it. This is very unpractical for sailors. The exciting thing though, is that there are solutions today to meet the needs of offshore sailors. Sure, you won't win speed awards and you can't watch Netflix, but if we put ourselves in the right mindset before we leave, we can get all the information we need while we're offshore. In the next five years, I do believe we'll see massive advances in satellite communications, which is gonna change all of our lives on board. Maybe not for the better though, because sometimes it is nice just to disconnect. So with that said, I'm gonna bring Sophie on and we're gonna announce our winner. Whew. Hey guys! Oh man, this has been exciting. We had almost 300 entries for this context and it was incredible. It yeah. was such a great experience to see all your posts, to see photos of your boat and to hear about your 2021 sailing plans. It was super cool. I guess that it's been the same for all of us. In 2021, our sailing plans look a lot different than they would normally do which is a bit sad, but reading all of your posts gave me a lot of hope yeah. for cruising. And I, I thought it was such a great, such a great thing. I wish that we had almost 300 Iridium Go to give away. <laughs> Unfortunately, we only have one. So who is the lucky winner of this Iridium Go with the Marine Kit? Where's the cable, Ryan? In the, not here, it's not here. Drum rolls. The winner is Sailing Kerguelen! Yay! Yay! Congratulations, guys! Oh, I feel I feel great for them, but I feel bad for everyone else because I really do wish we had 300 of these. <laughs> Everyone's yes. posts are awesome. So, Sailing Kerguelen are a French couple, Jérémy and Gaël. Them, I can even I can even pronounce it. I wouldn't be able to do that the right way. And here is what they tell us: We were looking forward to the beginning of the year after having had to revise our plan in 2020 due to the pandemic. We are casting off this year. On the program, leaving Dunkirk behind us to explore the French, Spanish and Portuguese coast before heading for the Canary Islands and then Cape Verde. At the end of 2021, it will be time to take a major challenge, crossing the Atlantic aboard our 34-foot sailboat. Might as well tell you that we can't wait for the temperatures to rise a bit 
to start this new sailing season. So this is the route, this is the route that we took, and I think that you guys are going to have a lot of fun, and uh, we can't wait to track you. Ha! Huh. Now we can track you. <laughs> Well, that's it. That's it. I hope I hope that we can do more of those contests in the future. That was super fun. Hey guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like this series, consider subscribing. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. And we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye.